Hello and welcome to worship. Well, we're definitely moving into autumn. The weather is getting blustery, it's getting cooler, and the rain and the wind are blowing the leaves off the trees. This is the time where the church has been thinking about creation right through September until now, the beginning of October. And it's a time when we think about harvest and inevitably we're thinking about the conference that will be happening in Glasgow at the beginning of next month, the COP26, where the future of our planet will be being discussed, while our readings today focus on creation itself. So let's join together in our call of worship. Mother and Father of all life, God with us, we gather to begin again our stewardship of your creation. Feed us with knowledge and understanding and awaken within our hearts a passion for sustainable living. Enable us to take lighter footsteps on your good earth and help us to find ways of living more simply. Amen.
let us pray. Lord God, your glory is seen in all the earth, and we give you thanks for the wonder, the beauty of creation around us. Glory be to you, our Lord, our strength and our Redeemer, our light in every darkness, our source and our care. We join this day, certain and uncertain, in awe of your undying love given to us and to all. We come to give thanks for all that you give and all that you do. Glory be to you, our Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Look on us, your children, with care. Pour out your compassion on us who are conscious of our failings, our inability always to live up to what you desire for us. Help us to know that through your grace we are forever forgiven, freed to live lives bathed in your love. Glory be to you, our Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. In these times of forced isolation, chosen individualism, guide us away from empty rhetoric and lead us forever in eagerness towards service of all your people and the work of your kingdom. Glory be to you, God, our strength and our Redeemer, our light, our source. Be with us this day as we dedicate ourselves once more to seeking you, to asking questions, accepting doubts, and to work ever to live and share your love. Our prayer, our worship, our lives we commit again to you, our Lord. Amen. A reading from Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, your greatness is seen in all the earth. Your praises reach up to the heavens. It is sung by children and babies, you are safe and secure from all your enemies. You stop anyone who opposes you. When I look at the sky which you have made, at the moon and the stars which you have set in their places, what is man that you think of him? Mere man that you care for him. Yet you made him inferior only to yourself, you crowned him with glory and honour. You appointed him ruler over everything you made. You placed him over all creation, sheep and cattle and the wild animals to the birds and the fish and the creatures of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, your greatness is seen in all the world. Amen. A reading from Genesis chapter 2, reading verses 18 to 24. Listen for God's word. Then the Lord God said, It is not good for man to live alone. I will make a suitable companion to help him. So he took some soil from the ground and formed all the animals and all the birds. Then he brought them to the man to see what he would name them, and that is how they got their names. So the man named all the birds and all the animals, but not one of them was a suitable companion to help him. Then the Lord God made the man fall into a deep sleep, and while he was sleeping, he took out one of the man's ribs and closed up the flesh. He formed a woman out of the rib, and brought her to him. Then the man said, 
At last, here is one of my own kind, bone from my bone, flesh from my flesh. Woman is her name because she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united with his wife and they become one. Amen. And may God bless these words in our hearing today. At the beginning of Genesis chapter 2, we read, When the Lord God made the universe, there were no plants on the earth, and no seeds had sprouted, because he had not sent any rain, and there was no one to cultivate the land. But water would come up from beneath the surface and water the ground. God then creates man and plants a garden with all manner of plants and trees and places the man he's made in this environment specifically to cultivate it and to guard it. And as we read on, we see that all the animals and birds are brought to man for him to name them. In other words, to get to know them, to acknowledge them and to realise that he has a responsibility for them. In summary, God has created a self-sustaining environment of people, animals, plants and bodies of water and land. He hands it over to man, whose main job is to manage it. The expected result from this balanced ecosystem would be a system that would remain for generations to come. Today, the environment, however, tells a different story of just how well, or it might be better to say how poorly, man has done his part. Wild Goose Publications have just released a book called Living Faithfully in the Time of Creation, in which they publish prayers and various reflections. And I've used some of the information in this publication for the reflection and some of the prayers today. One suggestion from them was a continuation of the account of creation, an imaginary sequel to the story in Genesis. In Genesis 1, chapter 1, God creates the world in seven stages, and they continue to day 14. They begin with God's delight when creation has been completed and he stopped working. In the original account, in the biblical account, for each day there is an activity or an achievement and God pronounces that he is pleased with what he sees. In this imaginary sequel, they do the same, except the activity or achievement is a negative event. I read from their publication. On the eighth day, God looked at humanity and it was in a mess. He longs for a different day. On the ninth day, God looks at Earth's creatures and Earth's creatures were in a mess. He longs for a different day. On the tenth day, God looked at the sky and the sky was in a mess. He longs for a different day. On the eleventh day, God looked at the produce of the soil, and the produce of the soil was in a mess. He longs for a different day. On the twelfth day, God looked at the land and the sea, and the land and the sea were in a mess, and he longs for a different day. On the thirteenth day, God looked at light and darkness, and light and darkness were in a mess. He longs for a different day. On the fourteenth day, God looked away from the world which he had created out of love and shaped with deep beauty, and God wept. When the time of weeping was done, God said, I have kept faith with the children of earth, but they have not kept faith with me. I have promised and given nature's kindly gifts asking that they be treated well, enjoyed and shared. I have promised and given deep fulfilment in life, 
asking for the safeguarding of creation, that her abundance may keep flowing. O oh, children of earth, you who have witnessed my love, how little I witness of yours. In silence I wait, I plead and I wait. Do not grieve me, let there be light from this darkness. Let me witness your love. I long for a different day. Quite dramatic. I've abbreviated that, it's slightly longer in the publication and, and if you get hold of the book, well worth reading. Well, we have been aware, well aware of climate disasters, flooding, drought, fires, and we are just emerging from the effects of a global pandemic. And as COP26 gets closer, we hear more and more about what's wrong with the world. And there is a feeling of what else can happen. And it reminds me of the book of Job, where Job goes from one problem to another, quite rightly feeling hard done by and not really helped by his friends. And we get right through to chapter 20, 38 of that book before God intervenes and says, says to Job, now stand up straight and answer the questions I ask you. If we are not careful, we can let ourselves become so overwhelmed with the difficulties and disasters around us that we do not know which way to turn or what to address first. What can I do? What difference would it make? Well, that answer is conveyed by an African proverb. Many small people who in many small places do many small things can alter the face of the world. In the midst of our present difficulties, I think it would be quite useful if each of us was given the same command as Job was. Stand up straight and answer the questions I am going to ask. Well, what would those questions be? What can you do, no matter how small, which could address the imbalance we see wreaking havoc throughout the world, in humanity, in all living creatures, in the seas, in the land, in the skies and beyond. As the seasons change, we are moving into autumn and we experience those stormy pre-winter days, blustery winds and sunshines and showers. And in this area, they are often accompanied by rainbows and sometimes double rainbows. A magnificent sight and one which reminds us that we are not alone. We know from our Bible readings that no matter how dire the situation, no matter how despairing our Creator must be, He is waiting for our return. Time and time again, we see that God keeps His covenant with His people. It is His people who struggle to keep their side of the arrangement. Our reading from Genesis 2 was about the finishing of creation when God makes a covenant with man. And further through the book of Genesis, we read the story of Noah, a man who we are told walked with God. It's a story of a flood which swamped the earth, but Noah was warned by God and he had built an ark. He prepared for the disaster and he took on board animals and birds, a mini creation, if you like, ready to begin again. Interestingly, the story of a flood and survival features in manuscripts other than in the Bible, and they were written by tribes in the ancient Near East. Noah and the ark eventually come to rest, and God reiterates his covenant with mankind. And we read, <clears throat> Then God said, this is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and between every living thing that it is with you into perpetual generations. I have, sent my, I have set my bow in the cloud and it shall be for a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. And when I shall cover the earth with a cloud and the bow shall be seen in the cloud, then will I remember my covenant which is between me and you and between every living thing in all flesh. 
and there shall be no more waters of a flood to destroy all flesh. Therefore the bow shall be in the cloud that I may see it, and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living thing in all flesh that is upon the earth. Whenever we see a rainbow, and we'll see many at this time, remember this covenant, the sign of hope. Let us always remember that there is hope, even when we feel in despair, frustrated and helpless. Let us remember the sign of God's promise, the colours representing the world around us. Red is the colour of the berries we see on the round and hawthorn trees. Let it be for us a sign of suffering and courage. Orange is the colour of pumpkin, spices and squash. Let it be for us a sign of gift and rejoicing. Yellow is the colour of harvest corn. Let it be for us a sign of sufficiency and sharing. Green is the colour of the earth after the rain. Let it be a sign of growth and new life. Blue is the colour of the sky above us and the sea around us. Let it be for us a symbol of power and peace. Indigo is the colour of the night just before dawn. Let it be for us a sign of kindness and care. Violet is the colour of small flowers clinging to the mountain rock. Let it be for us a sign of our longing and hope in Christ and for God's kingdom here on earth. The Rainbow our hope embodied in a phenomenon which we will see unexpectedly on our wildest of days. Amen. And now we bring our prayers for others and for ourselves. Let us pray. God of love, God of wisdom, open our eyes and free our senses to see your presence, your gift of undying love in our lives, in our good times and in the not so good. Help us to see this gift to do your will in this world of need. Lord, we thank you for the beauty of this planet Earth. We thank you that you created all things and each one of us in your image. Today, as illness continues to spread through our country and our world, we pray for all those who have suffered and continue to suffer Help us and all charged with the care of others to act and to find ways to ease pain, lessen, bur lessen burdens, and to do all that can be done to act in love. Today, as politics and economics continue to sow division rather than peace in these trying times, we pray for leaders and citizens, each of us, each one of us with a part to play. We pray for wisdom and compassion, for the ability to participate in the work of making the lives of all your beloved children better. Help us and all leaders to act in your name for the good of all. As COP26 approaches, we continue to pray for leaders and those in positions of influence, that good decisions will be made for the future of this fragile earth. Today we bring to you our prayers for the church. As we seek to know and to do your will, we pray for boldness, 
to face our challenges and to find our place where we can do good and love can move from talk to action. Today we come seeking to hear your voice, to live your call, to ask our questions and to explore our doubts. We pray for ourselves, that we may find each in our own way the path of service, service of you and one another. All our prayers and the quiet secret thoughts in each of our hearts we offer to you, our God of love. Amen. Now let's dedicate our offering. Creating God, you have given us a vision of a new heaven and a new earth. Resources conserved, earth tended, atmosphere cleansed, trees planted, injustice ended, oceans teeming and nations at peace. Receive our commitment and so entwine our lives with your purpose that heaven and earth sing of your glory. Amen. And now let's join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us for, from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever. Amen. shines with beauty bringing us a revelation of the maker's glory leading us in adoration nature shines with beauty Nature grows in labor 
Nature shines with beauty Bringing us a revelation Of the Maker's glory Leading us in And as we leave our worship today, let us go out giving thanks for the good earth. Let us go out in unity with all who seek to preserve the earth. Let us go out with the conviction that change is possible and climate disaster is not inevitable. And the blessing of God the Creator, Christ the Redeemer, and the Spirit the Sustainer of all life be with us and with all peoples of the earth, now and always. Amen.